Okay, let's hope this all records. So, uh, Bordas, uh, Sutmeich, uh, Wedi Bob Dith. Um, uh, good morning. Uh, how's your day been? And, uh, yes, that was in Welsh. Again, I've been focusing more on Welsh because it's less discouraging, like, not just, um, going on the fact that I picked up some Welsh when, between the ages of, like, 12 and 14, and then, um, uh, then it just, like, fell into, how old am I now? 25 years of disuse because of, um, well, you know, there's nobody, like, uh, in Lenaway County, Michigan, who spoke Welsh besides myself in the mid-90s, and, um, going to the, uh, UK during the summers to stay at my eldest half-sister from my mother's side and my brother-in-law at the time. Um, they lived in London, uh, so, um, I don't think any of their friends spoke Welsh. My brother-in-law knew some Welsh just to mess with people. <laughs> uh, he didn't know a whole lot. Um, it wasn't one of the languages he had significant fluence in, and the man spoke ten languages. Um, Thirteen if you count... no. Hmm... Twelve? Twelve, maybe thirteen, if you count the, uh, the dialects of Chinese that he spoke. And, um, because he's from Hong Kong. He's, uh, um, ethnic background being Han Chinese. And so, of course, you know, very few people would expect a Chinese guy to speak any Welsh. So he, he knew, he knew tourist Welsh. <laughs> I think you put it that way. It's like he knew tourist Welsh, uh, but just in, and I don't know, he was able to pick up languages very easily. So he was able to pick up a little bit more than tourist Welsh. I think he undersold himself on his abilities there, but, you know, he, he knew just enough to really, like, you know, entertain people, if you want to be honest. That's, I think it was more like to entertain himself by the shocked glances he could get from people who, um, grew up speaking it. But, uh, but that's not what I was going to go on about today. In fact, I'm not even sure I'm going out at this point. I think I am literally a dollar short for going out to the bar tonight. And unfortunately, uh, it is a special event night because it is their annual Halloween event at, um, Factory Mondays at Tenetco out in, uh out on Liberty Street in downtown Ann Arbor, and so, uh, so yeah, um, unlike previous years where they've, um, or they would give, uh, they would do free cover for anybody in costume, and they had very low standards for what counted as a costume on that night, so my guess is, like, maybe they were losing money, because all this last year, like, um, none of the event nights have any kind of, like, free cover special conditions, including Halloween. So it's, like, no longer free cover with costume and, you know, so my guess is they were losing money, maybe, or maybe it's new management. I don't know. I don't know. All I know is that it's going to cost me $3 to go out tonight, and I don't, I technically have five. Unfortunately, Night Ride, which is like the uh, the low cost uh, shared uh, car service that is sponsored in part by the Ann Arbor Transportation Authority, they um they what they what oh that's um even though I do have the Cripple Pass, which is like basically like a free bus pass for the bus, uh, but it also is reduced fare like greatly reduced fare for a ride users. Um, Unfortunately, I think I'm a dollar short. Yeah, it's it's something like 250, and as long as I have 3, there's usually somebody who has quarters on them who can give me change for that. Um or, you know, the driver will just be like, "You know what? Here's a bunch of quarters from earlier in the evening and he'll give me change." They want exact change like officially, but um 
Yeah, you know, I I have exactly five, so that is fifty cents short. And unfortunately, I cannot count on being able to get even fifty cents from people tonight. So unless I'm going to think about it while I'm doing my face and figure, you know, okay, is it worth sacrificing laundry quarters this late in the month? Um, you know, I I've got in theory enough for between. Two and a half to three loads of laundry, depending on whether or not I use the dryer. But I'm also thinking, is that worth sac- I don't know. I'll have to think about my budget a bit while I'm doing my face. I'll be right back. I don't know. I think I'm going to have to talk to my psychiatrist about any kind of medication adjustments because I know I'm supposed to be drinking a lot more water on my ADHD meds, but this last week... My mouth has gotten so dry, so, so very dry. And where was I going after this? I've, I'm, I've kind of gotten myself into this procrastination loop with the, uh, now four crochet projects I've got going, maybe more. I don't know. I get to a point where I give a, a pause on one, but I'm still feeling like I... I, I end up feeling like I've disappointed myself and let myself down somehow if I um, if I don't finish a crochet project, so I end up starting on another one and um, and then for whatever reason, that one comes to a pause and I, I think I I think right now I'm kind of reasoning myself into using this to justify a procrastination loop, which I really um, am not all that... Uh, at least I realize I've created a problem for myself and can hopefully... Um, you know, the first step to solving the problem is to admit that the problem exists in the first place. So, keep your fingers crossed for me. So, where was I going from here? Right, goth Christmas. So, this is not phraseology I am using lightly. I'm not necessarily saying this because, um, because what? Because it is the time when you know, goths are most in their element as far as, like, putting up the decor and, you know, it's like a day of the year where we get, uh, you know, sort of like a social pass for all of the bat and spider web motifs all over our homes all year round. In fact, I had, um, somebody at, um, 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 what's that place called? Insomnia Cookies. He was... He, he made some kind of comment about how uh, one of my bandanas that I wear on my head most of the time. Because um, uh, I can't remember if this was the spiderweb patterned one or the skull patterned one. Uh, in fact, I have three spiderweb patterned ones. I have two that are white print on black or... I think it's actually black print on white, just, I don't know, but it's like, you know, like the white webbing and spiders over the black um, background. Uh, I have two of those by accident, and then I have one where the spiders are in color, and I don't like that one as much, and I bought that one by accident, but um, from the store I got, I don't know, it was like a dollar, so I'm like... It was a dollar at the time I got it out at uh, Sam's, downtown Ann Arbor, out on Liberty, like right across from the post office, and about two blocks down from the, um, from the nightclub. So where was I going with this? Uh, so yeah, I, um, I was saying things about um, bandanas. So it's like, yeah, I have three spiderweb bandanas, one with skulls on it, and this is just what I wear. This is like, I usually wear a bandana almost daily, um, not necessarily the spider and skull ones. Now, why am I going out when I even said I might not be able to afford it? And that's because I'm still trying to decide. And so, yeah, goth Christmas. So I don't use this term. This is not a phrase that I necessarily use lightly, though it is a kind of a lighthearted phrase. Like I said, you know, we kind of get 
a pass for being the uh, darkly inclined, macabre aesthetic, uh, Bella Lugosi's dead and dancing folks that we are all year. We get a bit of a pass at this every October, and you know, it also helps that a lot of goths, especially since um, Fields of the Nephilim took off in, oh gosh, I want to say, I got to get back to, and I think I want to refilm part one of that. That's, and that's what's keeping me from finishing that series that I've got. It's more uh, video essay style than a lot of my videos tend to be. Um, but yeah, like I said, I think I might want to refilm the uh, the first part of that. But yeah, um, Fields of the Nephilim, they got together, I want to say, first lineup was in 83, though their first recordings didn't appear until 85. One of my exes, this would be my best ex, huge Fields of the Nephilim fan, and... Now, granted, not quite so big that he was able to discern the um, sort of parody articles that one of the um, one of the UK magazines, somebody there in during the late '80s and early '90s, would write these <laughs> just straight up parody ar articles about Fields of the Nephilim, and I think Scott fell for a couple of them. Uh, <laughs> So, uh, so, yeah, that's a thing. Um, go find those. They're, they're, they're hilarious. I actually had to tell him, like, no, they're, they're, this band is not from Montana. Like, nobody in this band is from Montana. They're all English. Like, <laughs> Carl McCoy grew up, like, pff, like, uh, Stoke-on-Trent? I don't remember now, all of a sudden. But then again, he's my best ex. Not my... <laughs> Not a current relationship. Obviously, we did not share quite the love for Fields of the Nephilim, but I really appreciate what they do. But yeah, I brought them up because, you know, it certainly helps around um, Halloween, late October. Um, sound in uh, the Northern Hemisphere, as per those who have adopted the, uh, the Gaelic name for their... Ah, uh, crap. Is this drying out on me? Probably. Um, for their Wiccan-esque celebrations. Oh, gosh. That's a rat and a half, and I'm not gonna bore you all with that right now. I can, I can definitely do that another time. But where was I going? Right. So, yeah, it, it definitely helps that a lot of goths also end up practicing some kind of paganism and or witchcraft. Yes, two different things. Ah, uh, that, but that is another video for another time. Um, where was I going with this? Right. So yeah, it definitely helps, or at least it doesn't hurt, that a lot of goths end up being some kind of pagan. So not only is it, but yeah, so goth Christmas, where was I going with this? So, um, uh, yeah, you'll see a lot of explanations on what Samhain actually means in Gaelic, and I'm sure that's not quite, you know, the best pronunciation, depending on most dialects, I'm sure. Everybody likes to drag me for how I pronounce Irish, and yet you wonder why I've shifted my focus back to Welsh. But I digress. So, um, yeah, it means November, like, that's seriously what it means. It means November. That is the word for November. Um, there are a lot of really cornball... Ah, oh, gosh. Oh, I'm forgetting the word for it, but basically, um... There's a lot of words where people have these sort of fantastical etymologies for them. And once again, this is my psoriasis gel for my legs, um, because it's nice and scaly. Um, well, it's not quite scaly, but it's nice and red, and therefore it gets the cream so that it doesn't go scaly. But I would digress. So, um, yeah, it means November. Like, there's a lot of these little, like, 
fantastical, um, retroactively applied etymologies on what it originally meant before sound meant November, but I, I, it's like uh, most of these are complete nonsense. But yeah, it's it's a harvest festival. It um the uh, the um. So, across the British Isles, which includes Ireland, and Isle of Man, which I know there are people who like to argue with me on this, but Isle of Man is not officially a part of the United K Kingdom. They've had their own government since, I want to say, the 8th century. They've had their own independently functioning government, but they are a crown dependency. This means that um, they get... Um, um, military protections from the UK, and, um, there's this odd relationship between Manx government and the Queen, um, or, and, you know, like, the royal family by extension, uh, but it is not at all comparable to the Queen's relationship to British Parliament in the UK proper, or rather, the rest of the British Isles. Uh, uh, there's a couple other crown dependencies, but they're in the channel. Uh, but yeah, like, man is not exactly British, as in not part of the United Kingdom. It's part of the British Isles. That's how man is British. But I digress again. So yeah, there's, like, uh, like, you go, uh, this is the thing. This is the thing that always gets me when I'm explaining ancient pagan, because I come from a reconstructionist background, like, that's how I, long story short, re-entered paganism. Again, that's another story for another time, but, uh, things and stuff, and, um, where was I saying? Um, I need a mirror. That is a mirror. Um, so, yeah, when, um, things happen and stuff and nonsense, um, so yeah, there have been a lot of... So, as a Reconstructionist, uh, the, um... There is... Uh, uh, it's a methodology. It's a method of practice. It basically means that we start with the original source material, or as close to it as we can get with uh, the assistance of archaeologists and other historians. So we start with as close to the original source as possible, and we adapt what needs to be adapted, and we add what needs to be added. Uh, this does not mean that we just sit our nose in books without practicing, as some people see seem to believe. It does not mean that we are necessarily completely separate from the rest of the pagan community, but it does mean that there are a lot of differences. And one of those differences is that uh, Celtic Reconstructionists, of which I've never formally aligned my religious practices, um, I've always um, felt a little bit more called to the uh, Hellenic pantheon. Un until fairly recently, but that's another story for another time, and I'm not going to bore you with it now. So, yeah. Um, so yeah, there's uh, there's a, there's a wide variety. Like, there's no singular um, ancient pre-Christian Irish tradition. There are several traditions. Um, broadly, there are um, traditions most closely related to Ulster, uh, which is. Um, uh, six, uh, the, uh, the six counties of Northern Ireland is six-tenths of Ulster, to, or four-fifths of Ulster, so they're three-fifths, three-fifths of Ulster, so, um, is, uh, Northern Ireland, and there's, like, four more counties up on here, and I know I'm going backwards, um, like, so for your end, like, this would be, like, Northern Ireland, and the other four counties are, like, this way, so, um, that's a thing. And then what happens is the lipstick that I wanted is in the front room, but you know what? I'm just going to grab whatever looks okay right now. Uh, but then what happens? Um, so yes, um, you know, there's, there's 
uh, Ulster, and then there's like the rest of the island. Um, broadly, we can break it up that way, but you know, there's other things. Um, one thing that I just that bugs me so hard is um, like the uh, uh, I'm getting I'm getting di I'm digressing to hell out. So yeah, Samhain it doesn't mean summer's end. It um, there are, are a plethora of traditions, um, going back to the British Isles in general, wherein, um, there are some pretty strong harvest festivals that also honor the, uh, so basically it's like the last harvest festival, and that, um, mm, during the rise of neo-paganism in the 1950s in the UK, um, some stuff was going on in the 19th century even, but um, concretely we can say that most neo-pagan traditions go back to the UK in the 1950s, and ugh, I've got a very small amount of time if I decide I'm going to sacrifice any laundry quarters. So, then what happens is... Um, uh, so yeah, the last of the major harvest festivals, and also a time wherein... Uh, many said traditions going back to the Isles honors the uh, the sacred dead and the uh, those who have passed from one's family and all of that. There are similar festivals um, from other times of the year, but close enough in other parts of Europe and even other parts of the world. And though, if we want to go to the uh, to the Southern Hemisphere, it would be, like, kind of reversed. It'll be reversed, like, because, you know, seasons are backwards there. <laughs> like, okay, yeah, it's forwards for their understanding. <laughs> so, uh, then what happens? So, yeah, it's like, it's not just that a lot of Goths happen to be pagan and or practice witchcraft. Again, two different things. Another video for another time. Um, but it's also the fact that, you know, a lot of us are kind of feel like we're celebrated, but it's goth Christmas, not so much that we kind of get a social pass for you know the uh, the black lipstick and the heavy makeup and the various bat and spider motifs and you know listening to Bella Lugosi's Dead on a Loop and dancing the night away by to the creepy sounds of everyone from Roz Williams to she passed away to Nico to and Leonard Cohen to whatever the hell a like Jeton de Mon is doing lately. I think she's really like like she's she's sort of found this niche like right in there with Leonard Cohen and um Nico and all and that's wonderful. I love her for that. And a lot so for Turnus and a lot of other musicians. Like a lot of people think that this is you know, some scary, scary music. I had some, but, oh gosh. Ah. Uh, one of the roommates that sucked when I moved back into the Ipsy area. Um, two of them sucked. One wasn't quite so bad, but he was barely there. But, yeah. Somebody said something about how, uh, um, oh, oh gosh. I can't remember. Oh, uh, was it Support Turnus? I think it was. I think I was playing Support Turnus on my show. Um, before my computer decided to have a hissy on me. And he's just like, what the hell is this creepy music you're playing? I'm like, this is a poor Turnus. She's wonderful. Like, uh, wait, that's a woman singing? Well, yeah, technically. But I digress. So yeah, it's like, not only do we get a social pass for all of this, uh, where it feels like we're celebrating, but there's also the fact that... <sighs> my, I've actually been actively avoiding my YouTube um, queue... The, uh, the subscription queue. I've been actively avoiding the subscription queue all month long because it's like every other video is a Halloween haul. And this works out much like Christmas for the rest of Western society, especially in the United States. It works out much like that, where I don't think most of these people are necessarily intending this, but the end result is still that if you can't spend half your money on all of this, and, and most of this is just crap, okay? Like, I'm seriously 
I, I'm, I seriously believe that a couple such people are hoarders because there's no reason for somebody to have this much kitsch. And I'm speaking as somebody who loves kitsch, okay? Like, I have the one little, you know, snow globe style thing that's got, like, little bats in it instead of snow, and it's a little skull. And I got it for, like, a dollar at Michael's, like, on clearance. Oh, God. Fifteen years ago? At least. Shit. I, when did my life turn into decades? But that's what I'm saying is... You feel like... And, and like, I really don't believe any of the YouTubers I'm watching who are doing these Halloween hauls. I don't think they're necessarily intending for people to feel like crap if they can't spend all of this money on these various kitschy little decor items. And for the most part, that's just all it is. It's just these kitschy little decor items. Somehow swears in there, and I will say that, you know, I did get myself Black Cat Salt and Pepper Shaker from Joanne. And I did end up couponing myself down, and one time when I went back there, and I got this, uh, this black cat, um, it's a little, it, it's a little cup attached to a dish, and, you know, like, you're, you're supposed to, like, put out crackers and a spread in the cat dish that's attached to the, to the rest of the dish, so there's a little cat bowl, and then there's a, um, like a cheese knife, a cheese knife, or cheese spreader knife, um, that's a tail, but the knife part sticks in there and, you know, is presumably, like, kept in place by the cheese ball that you're supposed to spread onto, like, an, arrangement, an assortment of crackers and whatnot in the, in the rest of it. And, uh, so yeah, like, I did, I, I, I will say, like, I, I know, no, no hate, obviously no hate to anybody who wants these things and genuinely, you know, feels that this can help enhance their happiness with their home or even just their bedroom, you know, if you're a teenager or otherwise still living with your parents. So, uh, you know, or just otherwise living with people that don't let you decorate the rest of the the place the way you like it to, right? So, uh, like, this is not meant to come down on anybody who genuinely enjoys this. But, you know, there are also those of us who genuinely enjoy just looking at these things and having at least a few of them around to, you know, enhance our, um, our decor and otherwise enhance our happiness with our surroundings. And this is, uh, this is one of the things that I don't come down, like, as a former, um, Levian Satanist and, yeah, I know, if you ever read Levian Satanist and you ever call it Levian Satanist, I'm like, yeah, when I'm speaking broadly to people in general, yeah, I do call it Levian Satanism. When I'm talking to other Levians or other ex levians I'll just say Satanism, but again, ah. Uh. So, yeah, like, this is one of the things that I don't come down too hard on the, uh, on the Anton LaVey fan kids about, because... Yeah, I, I like a lot of his ideas. Like, when he got more, like, later in his writing career and he called it his, uh, his, his junkyard philosophy, a lot of that just, like, really hit home and his ideas about, like, complete environments where, like, okay, I, I'm never... His, uh, his ultimate, like, end goal with this concept, it's a lot more, uh, it's a lot more detailed than a lot of people give it credit for. But, you know, the core idea there is to create a living space where you feel most truly yourself, okay? That's the core idea of LeVay's complete environment. Though, like I said, it when you really get into it and discussing it with people, including people who knew said before he passed, his his fully fleshed idea of complete environments was a lot more complex than most people give it credit for, but, you know, uh, so yeah, it's like it goes beyond just home decor, but, um, but yeah, that, that core idea of creating a living space where you feel most yourself, that is something that I am completely all about. I, and that's one of the things that I love, and this, like, keeps me you know, or at least brought me back to the goth subculture, even after my, uh, 
I took a few years off just because I, I, I just... Mental health reasons. I'll leave it at that. That's another story for another time. So, um, but yeah, so, you know, when you're in a situation like mine, similar to mine, not too much better than mine, maybe a little worse than mine, maybe totally worse than mine, you know, y y you, you know that nobody's intending to make you personally feel bad. So that's why I've taken a break from, you know, just my YouTube subscription queue. There are like maybe three people I've been watching consistently all month. And it's because I, I, kn I know that I am going to be putting myself at risk of some really snarky ass comments at people who don't really deserve it if I watch most other videos. Um, from them, especially anything Halloween related, because, yeah, you know, especially anything Halloween haul related, because I'm gonna see this, and I'm gonna, rem and it's just gonna be a, like a reminder to myself that there's something that has led me to fail at adulting, and it's not, and I know nobody intends this, but much like Christmas for the rest of society, this is this is how Halloween ends up feeling for a lot of goths. It's like, oh shit, I can't stock, I can't afford to stock up on all of these, you know, spiderweb fabrics from Joanne, you know, to make my own clothes. Even I can't afford even like some of the most basic seventy-five percent off sales at Michaels with all of the you know wreaths and everything that I'd love to decorate my home with. I can't do this. I feel like a failure. A lot of that also has to do with the, um, with the intense commercialization of Halloween that I have seen really take off in the last 15 years. Remember, I'm an old man. <laughs> I mean, uh, yeah, I, I got, I got awkwardly flirted with by a high school senior on the bus <laughs> this weekend, so I feel really good about how I look for an old man, but the fact remains, I'm an old man. I've seen things go from, you know, just like having to hit like the craft stores and Kmart and all. I remember Kmart. That's how old I am, right? So I remember like having to hit the craft stores and everything around Halloween um, because those were the only places that would have good stuff. But now you can just like go into Target or Meyer if you're in Michigan or one of the two other states that has like maybe five Meyer stores between them. But you know, or uh. You know, or or Ralph's even and Kroger because I I lived in California so I know like Ralph's is owned by Kroger so it's like you go into you can even like go into the grocery stores like I said and you will see Halloween decor some of it very fanciful some of it fairly basic but you know still usable it's usable enough for various crafty kind of things like you can get those big spiderweb table runners and do. A dozen things with them, and yeah, a lot of times they're just cheap-ass material, but you can still do things with them that can, you know, enhance your home and your living space and have help you feel most yourself in your home, and that's great that you can find this practically everywhere these days, but at the same time, it's practically everywhere these days, and that serves as a reminder that you're failing adulthood, or at least reminds you of these feelings of failing adulthood, because ultimately the key to having a successful adulthood is yeah, just self-care. Are you able to take care of yourself? Are you able to get your needs met? If yes, then you're, you're succeeding at adulthood, but there's all these other social pressures that... Uh, if I want to talk about this on a grand, like, socio-political scale, y yes, you know, there, it, it, it is designed to make you feel this way. But the, the people that you keep close, they don't want you to feel this way. But because they can sometimes afford a little bit more, you know, it, it, it just kind of reminds you that you cannot... And that's how Halloween is goth Christmas, because, you know, e even though by the most basic definition, I am 
handling adulthood, right? I've, I keep myself in the meds I need to, you know, best function here and here. I am able to feed myself without, you know, to excess. But then again, that would be like failing mental health if, because I've got a rant about this <laughs> for another time. You know, I'm able to, you know, keep my apartment no messier than I am personally comfortable with. And I'm at a point right now where I have to do a big, you know, pickup, but that's because I've gotten myself into this procrastination loop and using crochet as a means to justify it. But that's another story for another time. So it's like I may only even take care of three living creatures and over a dozen houseplants, so I can keep living things alive! Like, <laughs> I am technically doing more than the barest minimum for defining a successful adult, right? <laughs> barest minimum is you're able to keep yourself, you know, taken care of. You know, I can pay my bills, I can, you know, I can at least take the walk for like four blocks, whatever it is, to, uh, to go pay the rent, you know, I'm able to get myself, you know, the food I need, granted, I end up having to ask for a lot more than some of my friends do, but the fact that I can bring myself to ask when I need help, like, to acknowledge that I need to, that I need help and therefore ask for it, which is, think about it, like, for a grown-ass man, <laughs> Like, think of how many men will just, like, sit on this... And, and that is, like, what people are talking about with toxic masculinity. When, like, you are depriving yourself of the ability to do things because of society's ideas of manhood. And so, like, lots of men will just, like... this. Stress is one of the leading causes of early deaths in men especially, like... You know, because a lot of times, like, they just won't, like, ask. Like, they won't acknowledge that they need help from other people, and so this becomes self-destructive. So, yeah, like, you know, yeah, I, I do end up asking, but that shows that I recognize my limits, and recognizing your limits is a part of self-care, and it, this part of adulthood. And the fact that I can take care of three cats, got like a dozen house plants, I can keep living things alive. This is more than the bare minimum of measuring success as an adult. Like, I can take care of not only myself, but also others. <laughs> like, there's a reason I don't have children, I don't have that, but again, this is like proper adulting. I can recognize my limits and, you know, know what I can and can't do on my own. So, obviously, I'm not a person for kids. But I'm not really a person for dogs, either, for a lot of the same reasons. I'm a person for cats. I'm a person for fish, caged pets of varying types. Though, you know, with three cats in a, in a tiny one-bedroom apartment, technically an efficiency apartment, it's like, you know, I, I can't really have too many of the small caged pets especially with cats, but that's, I don't know, I could probably keep pigeons on the balcony, but eh, nah. <laughs> it's like, that is just asking, that is just like asking too much of, you know, that is just asking my, uh, my, my building manager to just put up with too much from me. I've, <laughs> like, I've already put a, put a, clothesline out there, if, if I went and kept pigeons out on the balcony, that's just a bit much. I've got, I've got a clothesline out there, I've got, you know, half a garden out there, um, but, yeah, uh, and I've got, like, at least a dozen house plants. I've got a few orchids that I need to repot this week. Oh, God. Yeah, at this point, I'm too, it's too late to go out. But, yeah, so that's, I, I'm clearly at least mildly successful at adulting, okay? I can take care of myself. I can take care of other creatures or and other living things. I can take care of other living things if we count the houseplants. So I can take care of myself and other living things. This, mm, this is more than the bare minimum of adulting, okay? But at the same time, I see 
Halloween haul after Halloween haul, and I'm just like, and I'm just like, I, I can't, I can't, I can't, because it, it makes me feel things about myself that I know are factually incorrect. So, yeah, if I'm feeling that this is just a reminder of how little I have and how little I am able to successfully work with, that, you know, that, that there are these, that there are things that so many people who I, who are both friends and other people I admire, they can do these things. And I can't, so compared to them, I feel like a failure. I feel things that are not true about myself. And like I said, if we're looking at the barest minimum <laughs> of what makes a successful adult, I fit that definition. Maybe just barely some days, but I definitely fit that definition. I can take care of myself. I can take care of living things in my care. I can do this. Uh, sometimes I have to ask, but again, that is a part of being an adult, is, you know, to be a successful adult who can take care of yourself, you have to realize your limitations, and sometimes your limitations mean you're asking for help. Maybe more than other people, but still, the fact that you realize you need help and need to ask for help, you're doing better than a lot of other people, especially if you're a grown-ass man who recognizes he needs some help with these things once in a while. So yeah, that's it. That's my theory on... That's my hypothesis. No, yeah, it's a theory. It's a theory. Um, on how Halloween is goth Christmas. Because much like Christmas for the rest of the English-speaking world at the very least, you end up with these feelings that because I can't do more... I'm a failure, you know, and, and that's it, that's it. So, yeah, if, if you're feeling like that around this time of the year, just remember that you're not alone in that. I am definitely here feeling the same things right along with you. This is, this is just life, right? This is just shit that happens and... It'll happen again next year, but, you know, if you're doing a little better next year, then, you know, great. And if I'm doing better next year, you'll find out about it, probably. <laughs> uh, I'm a loudmouth pygmy with internet access, just, <laughs> right? And, yes, I, I am, I am like... I was four foot nine until, uh, you know, sometime around, you know, me being 19 and a half, okay? A lot of people shoot up another couple inches um, before the age of 25. I was one of those people, it was literally two more inches. Because I'm, uh, I'm uh, at four foot ten and under, you're recognized as a dwarf in medical terms, um... I believe on both sides of the Atlantic, especially for purposes of claiming um, physical disability. So, yeah, I'm this much taller <laughs> than I would be if I were a dwarf. I'm this much taller than I was when I was a dwarf <laughs> as a grown-ass adult. So, yeah, like, pygmy counts for me. Pygmy count. Let me have pygmy. Let me have pygmy. And I know... And I know Joel and the bots say never fall in love with a pygmy, but a couple people have. They've all been men. And one of them I left a bit of a ruin for most of a year, and then he forgave me. And <laughs> oh, But that's all I gotta say. I gotta um, go edit this and figure out what else I'm doing tonight, because apparently it is just, yeah, it's too late to go out, so, I don't know, I might be able to just barely go out, I think there might be one last bus, but at this time, I'm like, I have to get dressed, so, I don't know, I'll figure out something I'm doing, I did my face, so, right? Alright, so, as always, take care of yourselves, wear your sunscreen, um... 
feel free to hit the thumbs to indicate your um, enjoyment or displeasure with all of this nonsense I went rambling on about for well over half an hour. And uh, if you haven't already, feel free to hit the subscribe and the bell notifications and all of that so that you can get updated on even more nonsense when I feel like I need to spew it forth onto the internet. And as always... Um, if you have more dollars than cents, I have a PayPal tip jar and a Patreon in the description box below. I also have a store that, um, I make buttons and I sell them sometimes. And as always, bats and kisses and I love you all and goodbye!